4.0 students. So it tells me that there's something good going on at that high school. You know, when you can turn out athletes and scholars and that they don't, they're not mutually exclusive. One nice thing, Bob, is they both of us are retired. Uh, I go to Annapolis a lot, and then you go to Andrews with being Air Force, I'm sure, and then there's Fort Meade, mm -hmm. and Bowie has the best of three worlds, Washington, mm -hmm. Baltimore, and Annapolis. Mm -hmm. And with Breck coming, mm -hmm. there's gonna be 60,000 jobs, mm -hmm. and Fort Meade's gonna get the best part of that. Right. Fort Meade's only 15 minutes away. Exactly. And yeah, that's we, a we've, great we've, thing Yeah, we've stayed in contact and interacted with all the people that work for the for the um, the, the state and the lieutenant governor uh, is the chairman of the of the state's efforts in that regard. And we stay in contact with him uh, a good bit, find out where we are. We have a mem we we have a seat on that board, so um, we try to track where that's going. Obviously, the the bulk of those jobs are going to go right in and around the, the Fort Meade area and that kind of thing, assuming they get off the ground. Um, but. I mean, there are a lot of Fort Meade people that live here now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that will continue. You're talking about public safety, and that is very important. As citizens, mm -hmm. you know, we, we look to public safety, and the Bowie Police Department, uh, which is relatively new, is doing a fine job. Well, we went to a referendum on that several years ago. And um, what we did, I mean, I, you know me, I, I love the, the guys and gals down at uh, the police district uh, down there on 301. They're, they're wonderful people and they're very professional and they're very effective. The problem with it was just not enough of them right. to provide the quality and, and volume of services that the city really demanded. So we sat down and tried to cost out and lay out a growth plan of what it would take to build a city police department. And we went to every community forum that would have us and walked in and said, this is what we want to do, this is why we want to do it, this is how we propose doing it, these are the markers to determine success or failure, this is what it's going to cost collectively, and this is what's gonna cost you individually. And when we went to, and I went to referendum with that, because I said, this is a major change in the way we do business. And reminded people that the day we open the police department is the least expensive it'll ever be. Uh, and over that four year, four or five years process now, the police chief that we selected, Catherine Perez, has gone from zero, and we're gonna, if, we, if the current budget stays as it is, we'll add five new officers this year, that'll bring us up to 52. Uh, our goal was, our initial goal was 57. So we're within striking, we're about 92%, I think, of last time I looked at where we expected to be, but we're about a year and a half ahead of where we expected to be. And I think all the citizens appreciate it too, yeah. because they do it such is. a great job. The, 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 the presence is here, the response times are, are incredibly better than they ever were before. Um, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, you, you guys have known me for a long time. I'm, I'm an old school kind of guy. When we hired Chief Perez, you know, I had this perfect, uh, kind of direct conversation with us. I said, look, I'm not gonna tell you who to hire, I'm not gonna tell you to fire, I'm not gonna tell you to run your day-to-day -day operation. Only telling you that we're only holding one person accountable for success, and that's you. Um, <laughs> and she has, she has met or exceeded every challenge we, we've put, it, uh, put in front of her. Uh, I think we're, we're quite um, pleased to have her here. Uh, and she and, and her staff, and then working with the city manager, David Dorch, I mean, we're ahead of where we thought we'd be. We're still under under the protected costs we thought would be. The uh, the interesting thing too that a lot of people don't pay attention to because we have absorbed that cost. Um, the last several years we've been able to keep the city tax rates flat. This year we're proposing the draft budget contains a proposed two and a half cent tax increase. But it, what, in addition with that, it, it also includes a 4.7 percent tax decrease on the county bill because we're picking up a service that they otherwise would have to be. Okay. And last year we got a five cent reduction in our county taxes. So in the last two years, our city taxes have remained flat, our county taxes have dropped 9.5 cents. Okay. So uh, even if we have that two and a half cent raise uh, this year, we're still, our combined rate is still less than it was in 2003. One thing I must say, Bob, is I, I would thank the mayor's leadership because I know, especially the last, since you've been mayor, uh, the ground that they keep for our Veterans Park over there in Bowie has just been absolutely magnificent. Mm -hmm. They keep that neat and fixed. And they, We've and got some of the greatest staff that you can imagine, you know, and you know, I, I can't stop bragging about them. And the, 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 the parks and grounds folks, the public works folks, the people, the core city services, you know, you talked about earlier, why is this a great place to live? 
because those services are delivered every day. You know, I don't have to worry about, is the trash being picked up today? Will the street lights be working? Is the water system working? Because, you know, the, the quality of the people that we have there, I have such confidence in them that I know it's there. Um, and uh, those people in parks and grounds do an incredible job. You know, if you look at, you know, like the number of ball fields they're responsible for and, and all of this, that, uh, I, when I travel across the this, this state and talk to other mayors, they sit back and say, wait a minute, you pick up trash twice a week? You pick up recycling? You pick up yard waste? You pick up refrigerators? What is it that you guys are doing in Bowie? <laughs> right. yeah. uh, because the level of services that we provide is unparalleled. Uh, some of the cities that the people they compare us to, like Rockville, you pay your city taxes, but if you want your trash picked up, you pay an additional fee. Right. Here, that you know, it's we're all, all it's all, all one package. People and, don't know how well they have it right. uh, living in Bowie. Until Basically, it's because uh, you don't hear complaints. Yeah. People were, are happy. We had those snowstorms, yeah. and as rough as it was. Uh, People got together and got the job done. Yeah, I, I got a couple of complaints, and you know, and some of them were f more reasonable than others. Uh, but um, by the time that snow ended, we had every street in the city at least passable. And getting into the cul-de-sacs and getting into some of the short streets, I mean, that's the challenge. Sometimes you come to a cul-de-sac, and there'll be cars parked in there, and the, the plow can't make that that turnaround because of the parked cars. So then we have to bring in some kind of a front end loader or something right. like that. Some, and, and the people in Bowie sometimes are incredibly patient, you know, with what, what they do. Some, some people call and say, oh, I want my street plowed right now. But, you know, we, do, we did, I think they, those guys and gals, I mean, they did a great job. They were working 12, 15, 16 hours at a pop. Mm -hmm. um, I saw you. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you came by. Uh, I saw him down on uh, Stony Brook, and he stopped. There happened to be a tree across uh, Blackwell. Uh -huh. And uh, I saw the mayor. He stopped, and within a short period of time, there was a guy over there with a chainsaw, and mm -hmm. they, were, they were cutting up and, and, and moving it. Mm -hmm. But the other thing, too, is uh, depending on where people came from, because not a lot of people are original Bowieites. Right. And like myself, I came from northeastern Pennsylvania. Okay. So snow was not a problem. Mm -hmm. And so you just get out there, and you clean your your driveway and you clean out to the middle of the street and the neighbor is from Pennsylvania so he was out there cleaning before you know it we had pretty much uh, uh, cleaned up uh, where we got and the elderly people our neighbors mm -hmm. and so forth take care of them it's it's a neighborhood is what we but have that, here. that's what I, one of the things I really like about this city because you know um, I have, we, we have a, a group of uh, guys that run uh, Boy Scout troops and stuff. And they were calling and saying, look, we've got 25 boys out there that are available Saturday to, to apply. Do, do you have some suggested addresses? Maybe there's a senior center or somebody that's, you know, housebound or something like that. And these young men and young women, and young women too, they were out there uh, plowing uh, and, you know, manually moving snow out of driveways, off of sidewalks. And, uh, and like I said, a lot of places you don't find that kind of a neighborhood commitment. And people that are new here need to know about the summer activities because we have mm -hmm. Bowie Fest coming up in and June. Allen's Pond. And yeah. I read in the paper there's some <laughs> renovation going on there too. We're looking at we're going to do a major review of the whole the whole park. Um, we're looking at the way the park's laid out. I don't think any of the ball fields are going to be moved, but there was one provision to look at keeping the amphitheater where it is or maybe moving it and then moving some of the parking lots around. My bias is I want to keep the amphitheater where it is, you know, knock it down and rebuild it and make it a little bit more uh, contemporary with better sound systems. and all. But that kind of little drop off that goes right down into the water seems like a natural place. I mean, if you go there, during the summer, every Sunday we have a concert there, and the diversity of presentations ranges from folk music to jazz to gospel to military bands, uh, rock and roll. I mean, every week there'd be something else, you know, for you know whatever your range of interest is. Before we run out of time, I really want to talk about the two really big upcoming events that we have. And Fred, you started the Bowie Patriotic Memorial Day Memorial Parade Day again. Parade. This will be about the seventh or eighth year. This is, I think, year seven or eight. I'm, right. I'm going to think so, yeah. And, uh, of course, Judge Devlin is always our master of ceremonies. Mm -hmm. And it's probably one of the largest parades in the, in the county now, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. Uh, it, it, when we put it together, you know, we put some people in a room together, and I said, look, this is what I want to do. And I understand this is a, about a five-year build-out because first year, get it off the ground. Second year, make it a little better. The, uh, the, the one faux pas that I had, and you two military guys can appreciate this, 
A couple of years ago, we got the, the, the Third Army band, you know, the Grumman Bugle Corps. 